Nick, since we're looking back on the past and making changes, I'm going to change the way, way I wear my hat. Okay. I'm going to do a Jeff from Fox and the Meeple. I'm going to float this Dude, bad boy. It's so high. Right up here. How do you do that? <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't do it, man. I gotta wear it down here. My head just won't support it. I'm Mike. I'm Nick. Here's Hello, the brother buddy. Smurf. Go subscribe to Foster the Meeple right now. They're I wonderful. dare you, a double dog dare you. We're gonna be doing a, taking a, a look at our top 10 games of 2021. It has been a year, and the only problem with end of the year game list, which we'll having, be having ours for 2022, come out in a week or we so. We haven't played everything yet. We haven't played it's everything yet. We still haven't played everything from 2021. No, we sure have But like, you really, there's always some cases of like, well, if I had played that before, it would have been way up here on the list. So let's just yeah. rework the list. This will be the top 10 games of 2021 revisited. So we're kind of looking at their list, looking at our list last year, and remaking our list to how we feel right now. And before we start, we just really uh, quickly want to plug our Patreon. We do a lot of additional content over on our Patreon. You can check it out uh, right now. You can go check out us talking about our 200, uh, actually our 300 to our 100th favorite uh, yeah. game right now. So go to our Patreon, get some additional content for the Brothers Murph. And with that, let's get into our number 10 game from 2021 revisited. Alrighty, our number 10 is a game that I, I thought would be fine, but we both ended up really, really liking. This and definitely this goes is, into the surprise category. Yeah, and this goes to Cuphead Fast Rolling Dice Game by The Op. What a mouthful. <laughs> Indeed, it is. Uh, but this is a <laughs> this is a kind of a dice, real-time dice version of it's a, Cuphead. It's a frantic, it's a fast rolling dice game, I'd Which say. Cuphead is a crazy uh, kind of shoot 'em up boss battler uh, video game, if you don't know. It's a really, really oh, fun game. Side very, scrolling. very difficult. Yes. Where it's mostly just side scrolling ones that are very difficult and then just big crazy boss fights that's all about moving and dodging and fast and, and, and reflexes yeah. and dying a lot. Yes. And so they made a dice version of the game where it's a cooperative game where you are rolling out these dice super, super fast and you essentially are going up against these big boss fights. You're kind of going through all different boss rushes and they are going to be attacking you and stuff like that and you essentially have to constantly parry and dodge all of these attacks. Exactly, so like in Cuphead, they are going to telegraph what they're doing. Yes. So you're gonna draw out cards from the boss and it's gonna say like, they're going to need certain dice faces you need to hit and that's you dodging uh, everything that they're doing and then you'll have the occasional chance to throw down an extra die, a little pew pew. A little pow pow, a pea shooter to do some damage back. And yeah. you're, you're going through the different boss packs. What's really fun is that each kind of pack is something you get to open up and discover yes. what's in there. If you are if you play Cuphead, you'll know. It's technically a the campaign kind of, game. Yeah. yeah. And you're going through harder and harder um, kind of boss levels. The first one starts with the root pack, which is also the first thing in Cuphead you yep. deal with. Um, but what's really fun is in addition to the speed element, as you get far enough along, they start adding in extra dexterity elements, yes. more and more things to have to track while you play. So it becomes harder and harder yeah. to track what you're doing in the 15 odd seconds you have to roll dice. Yeah, and these new things they're adding make sense for the bosses that you're totally. fighting. So like if you're doing a, a one where you're like jumping from cloud to cloud, which is one you of the bosses, stacking you have to start stuff. stacking just, stuff. Yeah. It just starts, it makes sense for what you're doing. The root yeah. pack, of course, is just a very normal kind of intro one, but it gets harder and it's really, really cool. You can it upgrade weapons stuff as and you stuff. Go. Yeah. You like Cuphead, you like real-time games. It's a really fun one that we were both like, wow, that was significantly more fun than I was expecting it yeah. to be. Especially something that's definitely aimed at mass market. Yeah. I was like, you know what? This is actually really fun. It does a good job of making Cuphead somehow into an analog format. And yeah. the art's the same, so the art's obviously dope. So yeah, it's cool. That's number 10. It's Cuphead Fast Rolling Dice Game. Let's get to number nine. Number nine is The Initiative. This is another a campaign uh, kind game, of, yeah. yes, another campaign game, short little campaign where you are uh, ultimately solving puzzles and Play stuff. a game about playing a game about it's like this, it's so this the weird story meta game. of the game is that you're a bunch of kids in the 90s obviously we can relate that was the era we grew up in it's my life uh you're and there's kind of a comic that you follow and read through the story and you're this group of kids who find a board game at a garage sale yeah and you're playing this board game but the board game's been modified in a bunch of ways and there's things that are redacted and there's all these like extra clues from the person who like made this version of the yeah. game so you're playing a game about kids playing a game yeah and all the kind of meta that and comes with it. you're solving these puzzles and these mysteries, and it's, it's like- You're it's decoding like, stuff. It's kind of like an escape room game in a lot of ways, yeah. where like there's, there's like clues that you're having to find, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, we have to look at this part of the book. Oh God, I didn't realize that this was, like, because sometimes you like read stuff, like, oh, that's slightly different font or whatever, like, oh, that's interesting. And then you realize you're like, oh, that meant something, but we yeah. didn't know that at the there's time. We read the little it's, Easter eggs. All these little Easter eggs, you have to find it and deduce in these kind of like escape room puzzle type ways 
But again, it's a game yeah. <laughs> where you're playing kids playing this game, the yeah. initiative. And the game it's is very weird. accessible in terms of like the mechanisms yes. about how you go about things. And it gives you like a little bit of a, of a puzzle to deal with. And it's all cooperative and stuff. I just love the kind of meta of it. Yes. The comic that you're reading to get the story is really fun. Uh, and then the game within the game stuff is just yeah. really super really neat, cool. So. We haven't played through all of it yet, but I'm right. so excited to continue playing it because it was just such a cool, weird game within a game, meta Agreed. game thing that really, really worked well. Yeah, that's uh, the initiative number nine. Uh, look forward to playing more for yeah. sure. And uh, bum that we missed it the first time around. I know. Number eight is a game. Um, it's called Bag of Chips. What's your favorite kind of chip? My favorite kind of chip? Oh. No, you know the answer. Well, no, okay, okay. You said kind of chip. My favorite chip is Doritos Cooler Ranch. There you go. That's yeah. But that's, that's what, what I. I wouldn't say that's a flavor of chip. What's your favorite flavor of chip? Favorite flavor? Because like All I would told? say, my favorite is probably sour cream and onion. Sour cream and onion is hard to beat because I'll, Cool Ranch I'll get Doritos, the, no one else makes. I'll get it's with just, the, I'll get with the barbecue. Barbecue is specifically a summer chip. Oh, big time! It's a summer chip. I want sour cream and onion. Put your favorite chip down. Bag of chips is a game. It is a game. This is a push your luck game. I changed my answer. Salt and vinegar. Sorry. Oh, salt and dress. So amazing. Or uh, freaking all dress. Tart, the problem is we're not Canadian. Dude. All dress. If you haven't tried all dress chips from Canada, they're incredible. They're amazing. All dress chips are amazing. Eat them today. Also, weirdly, really ketchup chips from Canada. They're good. so good. Well, the game is bag of chips. It's a push your luck game where you are, over a couple of rounds, you're pulling out these chips from a bag, it's a plastic bag yeah. that looks like a bag of chips, and you're pulling out these different chip types, it's like potato chips and teriyaki chips, sour cumin, onion, chicken chips, salt that kind of vinegar. stuff, and they all, salt and vinegar, and uh, they have different um, amounts in the bag, so the most prominent one is potato chips, because it's just normal potato chips, right? And so you're pulling them out, and each round you're gonna pull out a certain amount of chips, and then you have these scoring cards that are gonna have a whole bunch of different stuff, but it could be like, at the end of the game, there's gonna be more teriyaki chips than sour cream and onion. It could be like, there's more potato chips than chicken chips. That's very likely to happen. There's only three chicken chips in the whole bag, and there's like eight of the potato chips. Yeah. So that's very likely. So that card, if you score it, is only gonna be worth like five points. But then there's one that's like, there's gonna be more chicken chips than potato chips. That one's gonna be worth, no kidding, like 250 because points. Because the odds are very long so that that low. is going to come up that way. <laughs> and so basically each round you pull out chips, like four or five chips, and you go like, okay, and then you get to choose of your scoring cards which ones you're going to discard because you're like, this isn't happening. There's, yeah. All the teriyaki chips are out. There's no way there's going to be more sour cream and onion, right? Right. And then as the game goes, you're pulling out more of these chips and you're getting to discard more of these scoring cards. And then finally you have the last round, the kind of last pull, and you're going to choose, um, I think it's like two of your cards to score, and then it's yeah, one or one two. That if they're, uh, I think it's two to score positive, and then one that will score negative, negative if you met it. So hopefully you didn't. And so hopefully you didn't meet that one. And so and then at the end of the game, and then you just score it, and that's it. And then, But it's so much fun. It's such a good push-your-luck game yeah. that, frankly, this is a game where you play it, and you're like, God, this has no right to be as fun as it is. I know. It's really fun to play like the odds, because as your chips come up, you're like, okay, this, you know, this is card's pretty likely to happen. I'm going to throw away this other card. And then, of course, you're pulling random stuff out. So in that second pull, you lose the ability to get this first card, and you would have scored that other yeah. one. So it's all about this like risk management. Yeah. And you're like, what's my most likely like way to score points and try to you're really paring down yeah. uh, from there. So I love the fact you have all these objective cards to start and you only end up with a few. Yeah, it's just it's just silly little fun, but it's again, it comes in a little bag of chips uh, kind of bag. It's and very like, gimmicky and stuff, but in a great way. But it's cool, and everything in the game goes back in the bag afterwards, so like that's literally the whole box. And it's great, it's a good travel game. It's a great thing to bring out with like, with like newer people or just like, you're like, hey, we're at this place, I brought a couple of quick filler games. It's perfect for that. But it was one of those games where I was like, man, this is so much fun. Yeah. I was blown away that, it was, that this game was this much fun. It's awesome. Because you're like, oh, it's Bag of Chips. Is, is there any way this game's good? It was really fun. Yeah. And so Bag of Chips are number eight. I really, really liked it. It's one of my favorite little push your luck games now. It's awesome. So that's number eight. Let's get number seven. Number seven was on this list last time. It's the Dinosaur Island Roar and Write specifically, yeah. which I think we agree at this point is our favorite Dinosaur Island, Dinosaur World yeah, game. The Dinosaur Island universe at this yeah, point. Yeah, the, the D-I-E-U, man, the extended mm. universe. Uh, so this is, we always feel like kind of a midpoint between Dinosaur Island and Dinosaur World yeah. where, you know, you have all the DNA stuff and the, and the crafting of dinosaurs and you are going to be drawing out their kind of enclosures. Uh, but then there's also the tour aspect of yeah. kind of visiting the enclosures that you've connected, hopefully, by roads and stuff. And that's kind of more from Dinosaur World. And the main thing that I love about this is it gives me all that fun flavor because yeah. the flavor of those games is so, so great. We have Dinosaur World. It's not going anywhere for now. Like, we enjoy no. it and all. But it's just so big. <laughs> Bless you, sir. It's bigger than that sneeze was. That means something. 
Are you alive? <laughs> you okay? Trying to get alive. out of the frame. Didn't happen. It's the first day. He ran away. Uh, Dinosaur Island Roar and Write keeps everything really contained. It's just easy to get to the table. You have a couple. Of it's a big for a roll and write. It is, yes. But compared to some other games, it's still fairly contained, right? So you have these couple sheets and stuff, so it's just easier to get to the table yeah. than any of the other dino games. And it's nice because like it, it still has a lot of variety. Like there's a specialist oh, yeah. and stuff like that and the different oh, yeah. kind of like special buildings. And those will be switching out every game. You have a whole bunch of them. So you're still getting a lot of variety. It's not like just a static game. Correct, um, correct. And then again, you're rolling out the dice. You're still dice drafting, trying to get the stuff that you need. It, it's kind of bubbling really... in these tracks to get different specialists and abilities yeah, and, and there's stuff. there's DNA and, and all that kind of stuff. You're building dinosaurs and all this kind of stuff. People can still get eaten. Yeah, it's great. It's really, really fun. And I honestly think, like, if we want the big epic version, we'll play Dinosaur World, which we yeah. do have. But it's like, for the most part, like, we'd probably play Dinosaur Island the Roar and Right way more often because it's just easier to get the table. Yep. And it's because both of us like Dinosaur Island, like Dinosaur World, love those universes. Yeah. But they're just so big. A lot of times they're kind of like... They have a little bit too much going on. I kind of wish they were streamlined a little bit. And this is kind of like, like we this always said, like, that. Dulasaur Island, which is a two-player version, is kind of like a more streamlined version. And we kind of yeah. like that one. And the cool thing is, is we actually have both of those, Dulasaur Island and Dinosaur Island, Roar and Right, in one box. Which so is we're nice. like, Seth, we grab that box. We got a party waiting yeah. to happen right but there. The Roar and Right's really good. Uh, we like it a lot. Um, it'll probably be the one we play the most because it's just yeah. the easiest to play. And it's a good hybrid between all of them, honestly. Agreed. So that's uh, Dinosaur Island, Roar and Right, number seven, still here, really good. Uh, number six is uh, one of our favorite filler games, uh, and I especially really like it at two-player, and this is Dice Miner. And I specifically oh, yeah. like it at two-player because you just get so many more points at two-player. They don't scale it in terms of how many times you fill the mountain or how many dice you use, it's so great. it just means you have more stuff to collect because there's less people taking it. So this is a game where you're going to take a bunch of dice and you're going to put it into this like kind of 3D mountain, and you're going to be your kind of dwarves and stuff, and you're going to be mining that mountain, bing, bing, and you're getting bing. these different dice. You're going to be drafting these dice, and you can only ever take the dice that are on top that are like kind of fully exposed to the top of the mountain, um, although you can break those rules a little bit here and there. Um, Expose the mountaintop? Expose the mountaintop. Wow. Wow. Rude. Um, and so, and then you're kind of doing set collection. You have kind of normal like D6, well they're all D6s, but you have kind of normal like pip, like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Pip dice. dice. Those are tunnel dice and you're trying to get straights one through five. Um, your straights have to start with one. So you really like a lot of times if there's only one, one in the thing, that's everyone's like, oh my die. gosh, that's not good. <laughs> there are gem dice that you can get that are just worth points, but if you have the most gems at the end of the round, you get to double your gem points. Uh, there are negative dice, but then you have ways to mitigate those negative points yeah, into hazards, positive points. Tools. So you can go like super risky strats, strats with a bunch of hazard dice. You can get these magic dice that allow you to re-roll stuff before you score them. So if you don't have a one for your tunnel, maybe you can get it. Lots of different stuff, but then every single die also has a beer on it, and you can say cheers, or we say piss off, and you... <laughs> throw that die, that beer die, to someone else, and you Get roll it. Get out of there. You roll it to them, and they get to keep that die. What that allows you to do is take two dice, and it allows you to take them from the sides of the mountain. You're kind yes. of doing a little side project. And it's just simple set collection, gateway level. You can teach this game to anyone, but it's got really good dice, really good production value. And especially at two, you just get so many points. Well, the game ramps up nicely because when you whatever dice you collect in the first round, yeah. you keep for the second round. Yep. And so you get this bigger and bigger trove of dice, and that's really fun yeah. to play with. So you can kind of invest over time in certain types of dice and everything yes. like that. But it's such a snappy feeling. And then game. everyone gets a little special character that gives you a little bit of asymmetry. Um, yeah. Like, it might start with a gem, or you start with a one on your tunnel die. So you get a little bit of asymmetry, but super, super simple stuff. Dice Miner is great. Yeah, it's great. This is number six. It's one we still enjoy playing. And if you got 20 minutes, 30 minutes, like, that game will go down perfectly Boom. in that amount of time. So it's a fun, fun hang, really. Indeed. And that is our number six, Dice Miner. Let's get number five. Number five is a racing game with cubes in the cube world rolling dice, which happen to be cubes. It's Cubitos. There's a lot of cubes in this game. Johnny Claire, what do you think was cubes? Uh, John, John, well, I feel like Johnny went to, went to every, AG and he's like, guys, guys, cubes. Listen here, I got cubes. You're like, I don't know. He's like, I made space space. And you're like, you can make whatever you want. Fair. Cubitos is fantastic. It's a racing game where you're getting these dice that are honestly terrible. Not the quality or anything, but they have like one dice face that has they a do, face yes. on it and the rest are blanks. Yeah. All these dice have pretty bad odds of getting yes. rolled. <laughs> the highest odds is 50%. Yeah, but what you're doing is you're collecting this, these, uh, all these different dice and then in a round you get to roll a whole bunch of them. So the hope is that you're gonna roll some amount of faces. And in fact, as you're going through and rolling, there's a push your luck element to this game where once you've rolled three dice successfully, meaning they've rolled a face, you can set those aside. Yep. And at that point, you can keep rolling if you want, but if you roll and all blanks come up, which, which is, likely. is likely to happen, uh, you bust out. Yep. 
Now, it's not the end of the world no. of bust. You get to kind of mitigate which dice stay behind for the next round, which dice you discard, uh, and things like that. And you kind of go up this fan track because people are like stoked at how like, chaotic you are. The underdog, the uh, underdog. And then you get to roll again. So what's yeah. really fun about this game is the dice spaces sometimes give you money, which you spend by better dice. Uh, all the different colors of dice have different abilities. If you yeah. roll their specific dice faces, like a little beaver or a cat or whatever it is, you get to consult that little card and it tells you how this functions. It might help you with more money or more movement or it gives you this specific special thing you can do uh, in the game. And that's where you can start to build these kind of wild combinations of stuff. Yeah. And ultimately, you're going to get this kind of pool of dice built up and then you're going to hopefully use it to start moving through the track and uh, ultimately complete a lap of this race. Yeah. Um, what's really fun is this game borrows some DNA from like Quacks of Quidlinburg and that it's a push your luck game. Yeah. If you're further behind, there's a bunch of these red lines and you will get to roll more dice as a kind of a catch up mechanism, yeah. a la the rat tails from uh, Quacks of Quidlinburg. Uh, and then the fact that the dice have these little cards that you can swap in. Yeah. There's like four or five different versions no, like for seven. every bunch, color yeah. of die that are all similar, but they're their own unique powers. Yeah. So. You don't need to have different dice every time. You just need a different reference card, and now these cards, these dice do this thing yeah. versus that. Which does because the dice just stay the same. It's such a smart yeah. thing to do. Like Tiny Towns does this as well, where it's like the the dice never change, but you just swap out what this dice now does in yeah. this game. And in the rule book, there's a whole bunch of like essentially suggestions of different abilities. If you want be like, a hey, certain kind of. If you want like a really in your face combative game, use these powers. If you yeah. want like kind of a just all about movement and racing, choose these ones. And it's just really really nice. Yeah. Um, and it's just really fun. Yeah, and one thing that's kind of fun of, of this versus like a pure bag builder like yeah. a Quacks and Quidlinburg is when you use certain dice, they go to a discard pile. Yeah. And then you have a draw pile where you have some dice and stuff, and you're going to draw those out. And then once you have nothing to drop in your draw pile, you move your discard pile. Yeah. So it's a deck building game with dice. So you can actually control a little yes. bit better. Like with if you bust out one round, you can discard as many dice as you want and save the others for the next round to be rolled again. So you can get rid of all your gray kind of starter dice. Yeah. And the next round, you have a much better chance of doing something really cool. And I love having a little bit of yeah. control over that, um, if ever so slightly. Yeah, yeah, totally. And that just makes it just next level for us. Yeah, it's really, really fun. It's, it's an so absolute fun. blast. Great racing game. Again, like the, the, you have slightly more control in doing quacks, and that really makes it yeah. better, in my opinion. But it's still chaotic and silly because oh, you're for rolling sure. dice, and who knows what'll We're happen. We're going to bust all the time. It's oh, ridiculous. Yeah, all day. Uh, really good. It's also got four different maps that you can race yep. on. So you have variety. It's one of those games where there's like so much variety in the game. Like so much to the point where you're like, geez, just, you could just play so many different versions of the game. Absolutely. It's very, very cool. QB does this really, really fun. John declared knocking out of the park as he usually does. Um, and yeah, that's number five, Kubitos. Let's get number four. Number four was one of those games that last year we were like, this probably would have been on the list if we had played it. And guess what? Now we played it, and it's number four. This is Boone Lake. It lived up to our expectations. Yeah. We and knew hunt. this would be on the list. We just hadn't played it by last year. Yeah, we got really excited for this one. I got really excited in particular, and for whatever reasons, like I'm gonna read the rule book way before I even like yeah. knew when yeah. I would have access to this game. Uh, this is an Alexander Fister game where you are are kind of settling some lands. Uh, and building them up and, and putting cattle pastures out and building up towns and cities and things uh, and, and kind of working up your production in these different areas in order to play out cards. It's really a card tableau building game. We're going to build this tableau of cards that'll give you instant benefits, end ongoing stuff. abilities, end game scoring to reward you for doing a bunch of cattle, for example. And you can stack. There's, there's not just one card that gives you extra points for cattle. There are multiple. And if you get multiple, you get to score those things over and over and over again at the end of the game. Uh, this game does a lot of stuff that we really enjoy. We like the tile placement where at the beginning of the game, you don't really have many tiles to place things, but you will put a bunch out and kind of explore. There's bonuses when you put stuff down, sometimes bonuses on the tiles when you place your workers on them, on and on and on. And the card play is just so rich and fun for us. Yeah, for us, yeah. And it's got a cool like action selection system where if it's Nick's turn, Nick's going to choose this action, but I'll get to do a follow action. Yeah. Nick will get to do the Which first nice. half, and then all the rest of us can do the second half, usually in addition as to you as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So you're always kind of engaged with mm -hmm. the game. The one downside we can say for this, and this has been a down, uh, kind of downer for a lot of people, is that like because everyone's doing stuff every turn, <laughs> this game can be long. Yeah. It can be really long. So this is a game that we probably will like mostly play at two player. Always, and, yeah. and but you know it's like well we mostly play games at two player anyway. So yeah. for us it's like not much of a, a, a deal Obstacle? breaker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it is a longer game and stuff, um, and I can admit the flaws that are in it, but we have really enjoyed our plays of it yeah, immensely. I like it a lot. Yeah, yeah. it just really does a lot of stuff that we enjoy. Uh, I love the following mechanism. 
the kind of how you allocate your resources and stuff. And there's that card play is just fun to engage with. I love the fact that I can keep getting these ongoing benefits. And now every time I do uh, land on this certain spot on the river on your way down, I get all this extra stuff. You know, it's just yeah. fun to try to like focus and build like these kind of wacky synergies and combos with the cards and stuff. So yeah, it's, we like it a lot. I like it a lot. Yeah, we really, really enjoy it. It's just good. It, it has the kind of the engines you build are kind of bonkers and they're just, they're a good time. And I, I really like it. Uh, yeah. And so kind of despite some of the flaws that we can find with it, we just don't really care. I like yeah. it a lot. But we make number four and let's get number three. Number three is uh, a game that we played uh, a lot last year uh, and we played a lot into this year and yeah. stuff. It's a great one to show people in the family. It's Cascadia. It's super good. Uh, and we've talked a lot about this game. A lot of people have talked a lot about this game. Um, it's won awards and done very sure well for itself. Yeah, it sure has. <laughs> this is a tile lane game where you are going to be adding hexagonal tiles. Uh, you're going to be drafting a tile along with a paired animal token. Yep. Uh, and then what you're going to do is place your, your hexagonal tile somewhere in your tableau that you're building. Yeah. Any place is fine. You generally want to continue landscapes, so you have mountains touching mountains and things like Usually. that. That's beneficial for you. Then you're going to get an animal tile, and you can place your animal token, rather, onto any tile that shows that animal anywhere you like, right? Yeah. So uh, what the game comes down to is how you arrange your animals because certain things you might have elk in one game that want to be in a straight line so it's like okay i need to place my tiles that show a bunch of elk in a straight line so they can hopefully draft those tokens yep. later and build them out that way or you might want families of bears in a single a double and then a triple you know yep. have three touching next to each other you want all your hawks away from each yeah, other away from stuff. each other and things like that so it just comes down to like how you want to arrange it and hopefully build large areas of the same landscapes because you get some bonus points there. And that's really the whole game. It's just really simple. On your turn, you're going to find a, a token and a tile set, yep. plop them down, add the animal token, and next person's turn. Yeah, there's really easy. not a ton to it, but there's some fun little puzzly elements. And it's fun to see this little beautiful natural landscape mm -hmm. kind of uh, arrive before you. So. And each each animal has like four or five different scoring cards, kind of talking about Kubitos, yeah. where it's like you have these tokens that never change, but then how Swap they score in. changes every time. So it's yeah. just like, you can have a whole bunch of different ways they score, and you just kind of, every game, be like, okay, these are how the, they're scoring this time, let's go, you know? And you just kind of, the game itself doesn't really change. It's, it's, it's kind of like cartographers in that way, where it's like the game itself doesn't really change. Yeah. Just what scores and how things score change. And that creates so much so replayability. So much variety. Yeah, because you could, I mean, because you, if you just had one scoring condition, sure, it would probably get old after a little yeah. while, but you could still play it for a while. Sure. But having four or five per, you're kind of like, okay, this just gives us so much more legs. It's just enough extra puzzliness while yeah. still being a very accessible and, and fairly quick game. Yeah. That you can just kind of play yeah. it again and again and again and again. One of the easiest games to get to the table. We've talked about it all last year and stuff like that. It's just, One of the it most just infinitely playable games. Just get to the table. Yep. Uh, Cascadia is number three. It's still really, really, really good. Um, and let's get number two. Number two is the other one that we were kind of like, well, we haven't played this yet, but I'm guaranteeing it'll be in the top 10, and that is Ark Nova. Yeah, Ark this, Nova. Was, this was sweeping the nation yes. really more Not overseas even really, yeah. before, before the end of the year. We're like, how do we possibly find Ark yeah. Nova? And we didn't. This is one of those <laughs> situations where it's a, a game that came out in Europe has not made it to the States yet. There's yeah. going to be a couple from this year, 2022. Same boat where we're like, well, that might be on the list, but we haven't played it yet kind of situation. How it goes. But Ark Nova is very, very good. We both like it quite a bit. Um, yeah. It's really, really fun. Uh, it takes a whole bunch of stuff from a whole bunch of different games. You have kind of the scoring tracks. We have two scoring tracks from like Raja the Ganges. You have the uh, action selection system from Civilization New Dawn. You yep. have a bit of terraforming Mars with cards, and cards will have tags, and certain cards need tags to be able to be put into play. You got map building, all this kind of stuff. There's a whole bunch of different stuff, but this is one of those games that takes borrows from a whole bunch of games and puts it into a really, really good game. And personally, I don't really care. There's nothing like new in the game because it does it yeah. very, very well. It executes at a very high level, so yeah. it doesn't matter. And you're building out a zoo and you're getting a whole bunch of different animals and you're putting them in different enclosures in your zoo and you're working up the conservation track and the appeal track. Conservation is harder to get, but is more valuable. And again, you're trying to cross those two paths. And so sometimes you just can get a whole bunch of conservation. You kind of meet over here. Sometimes you're going all appeal. Heel. And it's just, it's a very fun game that I really, I just really, really enjoy. I love the engine building of it. I think it's outstanding. Yeah, and you have a way with this game. You just I do, I do tend to do pretty good at it, yeah. Yeah, you're like, I'm just going to go a ton of appeal and a ton of conservation. I'm like, well, that's <laughs> going to that's gonna bode well Strats. for you. It is really fun. Uh, I love the zoo theme. I think it's really cool. I'm, I'm so appreciative that it 
that it's so focused on the conservation effort because yeah. I feel like zoos nice. have really upped their game in a lot of respects, uh, most of the, the good ones anyway, right? That um, they're so focused on the education conservation part, and I love that this game is is reflecting the best of what zoos could be. Yeah, where you're releasing animals and you're you're helping breed them to make sure that they don't go extinct and stuff. Yeah, That's yeah. something that we I think we can all get behind. It's super cool. It's super cool. I'm really excited. There's gonna be expansion. I think coming out this year. I'm really excited for that. It's just gonna make this game be more popular, which I'm okay with. Yeah. I really like Ark Nova. We knew it would be on the list. We just hadn't played it. The second we can get it, we got it. We played it. Um, but we, to be fair, we didn't play it until like March or so. It had been, yeah, it, it, it had been a little bit. Yeah. Ark Nova is very, very good. It's not quite the number one, but it it's is close. our number two. But let's get into that number one. So number one, uh, we had it played last year, and we have just really have enjoyed it. And for us, it's replaced its parent game. This is Terraform Mars Ares Expedition. Yeah. Uh, this was very highly ranked on your top 100. It was yes. in my top 100 as well. Uh, this is a, a, a slightly streamlined, um, just kind of reworking of Terraforming Mars, where it keeps all the heart of Terraforming Mars fully intact. We are terraforming Mars. You're all putting down some thing. oceans, yeah. you're getting some oxygen level, you're getting some heat level, yep. uh, and you are doing it through building an engine of cards via the tableau in front of you. All the tags and all that stuff is still there. But the main thing it replaces is a structure of the rounds. Yes. So now you don't just have like, oh, you're going to play some cards, I'm going to play some cards. And you're going to play some cards, I'm going to do an action. You're going to play some cards, I'm going to play some cards. Pass. Yep. Now, every round, you're going to choose a phase that you want to ensure happens out of the five possible phases. Yep. Uh, and then we're going to reveal all those phase cards, whoever's playing, and we're going to reveal those phase cards. And whatever gets revealed, those are the phases that are happening. If no one selected a phase, it does not happen. So there could be a round, no production's happening. Yep. No one selected it. Uh, if you're the one who selected a phase, like the first phase, you'll get a bonus. You'll get a cheat. You get to pay less for your card. Mm -hmm. You can still play a green card, but you got to pay full price. Yep. Uh, the, that kind of action follow mechanism, the race for the galaxy Puerto Rico thing, is Boone just Lake, you know, Boone Lake yep. is just really, really satisfying. Yeah. And what's really cool with this, the other thing that speeds the game up quite a bit, it's not a filler game or anything, but it's like you're doing a lot of stuff simultaneously. Yes. I don't need to like watch you pay 15 bucks for your green card. Yeah. I can just pay for mine and do mine while I yeah. do that because I just want to build up my little tracks anyway. So yeah, yeah. there's a lot of simultaneous play. Things just kind of move quicker and then you're into the next round and into the next round. So it just keeps it flowing. Yeah, it keeps I it feel moving. like this has so much more there's flow. There's some quality of life upgrades where now you can, at any time you can just discard a card for like three bucks. I'm it's like, fantastic. good, I have all these cards. I don't need you don't them. have to pay to keep cards. Just get rid of them. Um, now when you get steel and titanium production, you just get permanent discounts on yeah. building and space cards. Instead of having to get the cubes, that's just very, very nice. You can get card production. So whenever you do your production phase, you can draw cards on top of the research action, which allows you to draw cards. It's just really, really nice. Again, as we've said multiple, multiple times, I feel like we're beating a dead horse here, but it's like it kept all the stuff I loved in Terraform Mars, got rid of all the stuff I either didn't like or didn't care about. And so for me, this is like the perfect Terraforming Mars game. Mm. It's just, it's just, it's just perfect for me personally. I know some people like the original. There's probably not as much strategy in this one. I'm fine with that. I'm kind of dumb anyway. And so, like, I'm just, I love Terraforming Mars. I, I really do. I love Terraforming yeah. Mars. This, for me, is just, like, the perfect version of it. Yeah. Just absolute perfection. They improved on it and got rid of the stuff I didn't care about. And it's just awesome. Life I love it. Good. I love it so much. Yeah. And that's our list, everybody. Those are yeah. 10 games from 2021. Revisit this. So it was about 50-50 new to old from last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's probably a... We'll, we'll see in the future if that holds. Probably will. But, you know, it's like you just have so much more time to discover more games yeah. uh, as the next year or the next couple years play out. Yeah. Um, and so it's always fun to kind of think back and, like, would our list be the same? Somewhat yes, somewhat no this time. Yeah. Uh, we want to know what you think about 2021 games in general or our list. How do you like our rankings? Let us know what your best games from 2021 are in the comments below. Yeah. And a big thanks to our patrons who yes. you see scrolling by here. If you become a patron, you get added to this list. You get a bunch more top 10 content and more over on our Patreon. It helps us pay for the studio every single day. So we Always. really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your continued support. Indeed. And uh, I mean, that's it. That's it. That's top 10 21 revisited. Indeed. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you later. Bye. Thanks so much for enjoying another top 10 from us. It's really fun to look back and see how would things change if you had played more games. And we did just that in 2022. We want to know what games for you were the favorites of 2021, new or old to you. And we want to give a big thanks to our December and final sponsor of the year. And who better to have a sponsor than the Supreme Padishah Emperor of the known universe, Craig White. 
we saved the best for last. It's not that the other months aren't as good. They're, of course, as good. But if I was faced with the Supreme Emperor, Supreme Panishah Emperor of the known universe, Greg White, believe me, I'm going to tell them they were the best because I don't want to be disintegrated simply uh, via a thought. So I'm not going to risk that. Big thanks to all of our yearly sponsors, uh, Lucky Duck Games, Best Board Game Geek, <laughs> the best board game geek that there is, and, of course, Restoration Games. You can tell I'm a little loopy at the end of the year here. Uh, thank you so much for all the support. We really have uh, been having a great 2022. We hope you have as well. We can't wait to see you all in 2023. Let's get after it.